What's up YouTube, Jason here with Jason Bites Back episode number 15. The series of which, what, hold on, what? Actually, before I jump into that, Alexa, sing me a song. <laughs> okay, that was super mean, but it's funny. And when she's done, just rewind the video. I swear I will not do it again. Scout's on her. I think that's what scouts do. Plex is awesome and everything, but if you really want to squeeze the most features out of your Plex media server, you can get a Plex Pass. Now, while there are many benefits to having a Plex Pass versus a free user account, my favorite one is getting early access to new features that Plex has not yet released to the general public. So if you're like me and you want to try out those new features, check out the description down below. Down there, you can either purchase a Plex Pass for yourself or a friend, and hey, if you don't have a free account, use my link as well. It helps me out. So check out the description down below to get your Plex Pass today. Well, it's been an interesting July and I have some some things in mind, some ideas, some projects and some stuff that I'm doing. And today I got a package that's like the first package of a few that will help me along my journey. The first package, of course, well, I don't want to ruin it. You know, I want to I want to I give you a little taste there. You just you have to wait to see what that's all about. So that video should come out sometime, hopefully mid August, if not sooner. And I have another video. It's a little project plan. So that's going to be hopefully out in August at some point. Aside from that, there's not a whole lot to talk about with the channel. Just a few things that I'm working on on the back end to try to make some pretty interesting videos. So to jump into questions, uh, this one's actually a comment. It's from CEE 128D. I feel like your name is, is like a license plate, one that you see in the wild and you think that's supposed to say something. I don't know what, but once you figure out, you're like, haha. Just because it says hamburger buns on the package doesn't mean you can only use it for hamburgers. They work just as well for fish, chicken, steak, pork, sloppy joes, and any other type of sandwich except for grilled cheese. I have two things that are wrong with what you just said. Number one, what do you have against grilled cheese on hamburger buns? I've personally never tried it, but cheese is amazing. You need to calm down. Number two, well, you're absolutely right, but I'm trying a new thing right now where I'm freezing hamburger buns and I found a way to thaw them out and have them not be ruined. And I actually had a burger a couple days ago and it was delicious and the bun was delicious. So freezing is pretty much the way to go. Yeah. Question number two from Sunifa. Jason, is there a ubiquity docker for Unraid? And if so, can you do a video on setting up a DVR on Unraid? To be truthful, I just highlighted ubiquity docker for Unraid and click Google this, and I found a few different things to look through. I saw a post from 2015 where some people seem to be having some issues with it, but some newer posts that seem like it's up and running just fine. While I can't say I don't actually use the docker or really have any plans to use the docker, if you kind of Google it and play around with some of the repository options to install that docker, you could probably get it to work fairly easy. It seems like there's a lot of documentation for it, but I only have one ubiquity camera. So I already have that set up with blue iris and configured the way I like. So I just don't see, so I just don't really see messing all of that up to test out the Docker. That's really kind of limited to one type of cameras. Uh, if you want to use only one type of cameras, then that's probably perfect for you. But I personally just don't see me setting it up and messing things up and yeah, you know. Next question is from Son of Joy. What is the way you can use NordVPN to be able to access Plex outside of your home network? Or what VPN would you recommend to use with Plex so you can access it outside of your home network? Well, I actually played around a little bit with this with the NordVPN and I couldn't get it to work reliably. Um, I know Plex has like a relay server to where it tries to do the Plex uh, port forwarding for you, uh, or you can manually select it. So keeping it on automatic seemed to work sometimes, but it wasn't really anything that I would just count as reliable. And since as far as I know, NordVPN doesn't have any like dedicated Plex or port forwarding options. I don't know if there's like a, a static way to do this that's reliable and would work all, I mean, I don't really know. I did a little bit of tinkering. I couldn't get it to work reliably for me, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means that there's no obvious easy route that I found to make it work 100% of the time. As far as a recommendation, I mean, without me actually going out and testing multiple VPNs to see which one would allow you to do that, I, I really have no recommendation. I just, I don't know. Next question is from Devin. Why not use three single monitor mounts? If you wall mount them, you want to be able to tell and you could find them pretty cheap. That's actually true. I found like some like pull out articulating full motion ones uh, actually at Walmart. So I'm exploring some options. 
and going down this route. Look out for that maybe in August or maybe September. I don't know yet, but it's a good idea. I like that. I want it to be clean and not, you know, just... Next question, Brent. Where did you get your five-digit calendar from? I was really confused about this question, but I think he's talking about that, but it's not a calendar. I mean, I guess May 26th of 1948, I guess that could be a year, but it's not a calendar, it's a, a Lemetri thing. I'll link it down below if you're interested. Pretty much, I just got it just to do like a, a su subscriber counter in the background all the time. It's more of like a, it's like a weird timestamp thing that I want in my videos to where like if I go back and watch an old video, I can be like, oh yeah, I made this around 40,000 subscribers or 30,000 subscribers or whatever. It does other things too, but uh, I keep it on that all the time. It's really expensive for what it is. I mean, let's be honest. Next question is from Eugene. Have you already switched from Windows to FreeNAS? Did you somehow convert all of your NTFS disk to ZFS or just move the files? Okay, so this is on an old video and it probably isn't relevant right now and he probably won't see this question get answered. However, instead of going to FreeNAS, I went to Unraid and I slowly migrated my data by moving all everything I had over to the hard drives that I had and then just emptied one hard drive at a time put it in the Unraid, let it do it, let it do its thing, and then clear that equivalent amount of data from another hard drive over. And then I put that hard drive in and I just rinse and repeat. It took a while because I was so full of data, but still that's what I did. One key thing here though, you don't want to run into any issues when you're transferring massive quantities of data to Unraid is just say, screw the cache drive. Like the initial data dump where you're moving terabytes of data, just don't even worry about the cache drive. Disable it all together. It's a headache that I went through and I should have done it and you can enable it after you're done, but just initially, don't worry about the cache drive. And next question is from Vishish. Hey Jason, was wondering, the WD Red Drives are meant for max of eight bay NAS solutions. How do they hold up in your Zeus server? Is there any benefit of going for what WD Gold Drives just to be safe? Furthermore, how loud are the WD Gold Drives as compared to WD Reds? I don't know. I've never owned a WD Gold Drive. I don't know uh, if there's any major performance hits or gains from switching to gold from red. I really don't have much that I can answer from this question. All I can say is that the, the whole eight drives for one NAS is probably geared more intent on like one file system. Like if you have eight drives working together at the same time. But when it comes to Unraid, it's usually only using like one or two drives at a time. So, you know, your yeah, little eight drive limitation doesn't really apply in my own opinion. And as far as how they hold up in Zeus, they're great. I, I don't have any errors on any of my drives and I even moved my server while it was still running. You probably saw that video, maybe you haven't, but it was kind of crazy and I did it and I have no issues. So got lucky. Truth be told, WD Red Drives are cheap. They're good for me and I've had very few issues with them throughout my entire history of using them. So I recommend them. And next question is from Daniel. Dump the monitors and go VR. This is in reference to my uh, triple, you know, 4K monitor gaming thing. Once you go VR, there's no going back to pancake screens. And Sith said, that is so true. Okay, so a little bit of truth, a little bit of not truth here. I had an HTC Vive before. I played with it, I absolutely loved it. It was a very enjoyable experience all in all. But the thing that I found, even if like you're not doing anything, you're just sitting down, you're completely, your body's running cool, you start building up sweat around the, like the lids of the goggles. And it's just, it's uncomfortable. Your eyes get hot, everything just gets hot and it's all focused right there on your head. So extended gameplay is just not feasible because you start to get uncomfortable. And I think if you wear VR, it's hard to see the chat screen in Elite Dangerous. Like you have to like lift up. I don't know, I was messaging somebody and he told me how to do that. I could be completely wrong about that. Either way, if it's like a Sunday and I would just wanna sit down and game and play you know, Elite Dangerous for like eight hours, I don't wanna wear a VR headset for eight hours. So, you know, having the triple monitor set up is all about endurance. You know, having that VR experience, I'm sure that's amazing, but I just don't wanna sit with a VR headset on for eight hours at a time, so. Yeah. Next question I have is from Mark. Are you sure it's the Fire devices or perhaps the Plex implementation of those devices? Actually, I think it's less of like Plex's fault. And I think it's more of, you know, Amazon or Android's limitations set 
on the Plex app itself, because I think it's possible that like native Amazon apps are able to, you know, be more capable as far as playing, you know, high bitrate 4K or, or, you know, being able to support more surround sound audio options. But I think there's like a limitation to what the Plex app can access or has access to, or just can do in general. And it's not necessarily, you know, Plex's development team fault. It's just a limitation of hardware and or the base software. But like I said, this is all just spoken out of ignorance really because I was reading through forums, trying to troubleshoot and figure out if other people had the same experience as I had. So uh, who knows if these random forum posts that I read are anywhere near correct. Next question is from Oscar. I've been struggling to find a decent router. Right now I have the Nighthawk X6. S, I have around 12 devices, laptops, consoles, etc. How does this compare to the X6S? X10, would you recommend for multiple devices? Okay, so this is on the TP-Link C5400. I seriously still use that thing. It's been great with the exception of one incident where it was dropping Wi-Fi and I had to restart it. So, but that was like one incident. And as far as this X10 or the X6, I have not tested either one of those. I wanted to test the Nighthawk router from them just to see how well it ran a Plex media server, but they wouldn't loan me one, so I don't really know. But I can tell you this, and true story, like probably nine out of 10 times when I go to Walmart, I check to see if they have the Nighthawk router, Nighthawk router there available for sale, because if they do, Walmart has free rentals, AKA the return policy. And I would love to test the crap out of that and then take it back and get a full refund. But anyways, I can recommend the C5400. It's been a great router. I have absolutely no idea if the X10 router will do what you need it to, but I assume based off its you know reviews online and the price point that it's at, it should probably be able to handle 12 devices without any issues. I just don't know how they compare. And it looks like that is all the questions I had for today. Now that we're at the end of this video, soon you will see all of the names of the Patreon subscribers who have supported this channel. I greatly appreciate every single dollar you give to me. And if you don't know already, I did post the most recent Patreon video, so go check that out. I even dive a little bit more into some upcoming projects and talk about some of the things that I, I have planned. So check that out if you are a $10 plus Patreon subscriber. Thank you again, though. But hey, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and you want the best chance of being in next month, Jason Bites Back video, post them down below. Thank you everybody for watching and have yourself a good day. Guys, at the end of this video, look for the Patreon subscriber names. Those are the people who decided to support my channel and I greatly appreciate every single... <laughs>